Hello, traveler. I'm Yinqing, the Crux's surgeon at sea. Whenever a sailor has a health problem, they come to me. I deal with it all, from seasickness and common colds to amputations and everything in between. Oh, I presume the captain arranged this, correct? All right then, let's begin. But first of all, let me ask you this. What do you think is the biggest danger that all new crew members face? Hmm, that can certainly be a problem at sea, but it's not the biggest danger. The most dangerous thing for a newcomer is to underestimate the dangers of life at sea. Oh, I have seen many new crew members who see themselves as young and fighting fit and have no regard for safety. They think that since they are tough enough to look after themselves on land, they'll be fine at sea as well. Those are the ones that always end up in the sick bay. Everyone should know that being a sailor, especially on a long voyage, is a brutal job in an unforgiving environment. We have to face malnutrition when we're short on supplies, all kinds of injuries and diseases that the harsh ocean weather can bring, and even the psychological problems that can arise due to isolation and the lack of entertainment. To make things worse, the lack of medication and treatment options at sea can result in even minor health problems becoming serious, or even fatal. Oh, you probably thought I was joking, right? Well, that's not surprising. Most newcomers think the same way. But hopefully you now realize that with a little extra precaution, a lot of these things can be avoided. Well, I think that's enough for you to think over for now. Is there anything else you would like to know? Well, <laughs> my pleasure. Okay, let's leave it there then. Be sure to take good care of your health. Sorry about earlier, Traveler. We were so caught up on getting you to join the fleet that we didn't notice we were going a little overboard. Good thing the captain stepped in. Oh! Well, in that case, you have come to the right person. I'm not just blowing smoke. You're looking at the most talented navigator in Liyue Harbor. I'll start by introducing some chart reading essentials for new sailors. Feel free to interrupt if you have any questions. Let's start with what to look for when you get a set of complicated charts. First, you should always look at any indicated shorelines, islands or reefs, water depths, hydrological conditions, and other hazards. With these features in mind, you can answer the basic question of, can I chart a safe course through this area? Visually, nautical charts are a little unique. Unlike land maps, most charts do not have a fixed scale, which means that it can be hard to precisely determine the exact distance between two points. The most advanced nautical charts come with a supplementary chart, which has different colored lines marked on it to indicate distances. It's worth mentioning that under my direction, the crux is using these advanced kinds of charts. Some cartographers mark out other points of interest on their charts, usually with their own special symbols. If they don't leave any accompanying notes, they can be very difficult to interpret. <laughs> Not only those, we have tattered and torn charts that we've picked up from all over the place. To be honest, it can be quite a challenge, even for me. Some of these charts are really old and have symbols that I've never seen before. But if we don't decipher them, we will certainly miss many secrets of the sea. Fortunately, we have the captain with us. She managed to find some ancient books on semiotics that I can use to study the charts further. I don't think anyone other than our captain can manage to get these kinds of resources. Old charts and ancient books on semiotics are not the kinds of things that are sold in your average marketplace. Oops, I've gotten off topic. <laughs> well, that just about covers the basics of chart reading. Is there anything else you would like to know, Traveler? My pleasure. A friend of Captain Beto is a friend of mine. Ahoy there, mm -hmm. Time to set 
Hello, Traveler. Are you here to learn about marine meteorology? <laughs> In my line of work, I've got to have a pair of sharp eyes. I saw the captain showing you around the training grounds, and then you went to see Yingxing and Huixing. So I figured that she probably wants you to get to know the life of a crew member. <laughs> okay, let's get started. First, I'll introduce you to the basics of meteorology. Marine meteorology basically means keeping tabs on the weather as well as other ocean phenomena, so things like sea fog, storm surges, water spouts, and so on. These are all potential threats to safe navigation. Luckily, whatever weather might be coming up, there's always some kind of sign that gives it away in advance. Take water spouts, for example. They're caused by high-speed rotating winds on the surface of the ocean. They can engulf large ships and do immense damage. But if you know that water spouts can only form in an environment with high temperature, high humidity, and large clouds, then you can be well prepared. You will be even more alert if you also know that the presence of winds blowing in opposite directions, with a significant difference in speed, is a direct precursor to the formation of water spouts. And most importantly, if you spot a small white vortex emerging from the clouds, you should immediately notify the crew to steer clear of what's ahead. So there you go. Those are the warning signs of water spouts. I am proud to say that over the years, I haven't let a single one sneak up on my watch. <sighs> I've got to confess, I learned almost everything I know from the captain. All the stuff about meteorology that I just told you about, she's the real expert. Do you know the small fishing village next to Wang Shu Inn? I heard that when Captain Beto was a kid, she worked there fishing. Later, she made her way to the harbor where she struggled to make a living. <laughs> Growing up in an environment like that, it's no wonder she knows everything about the sea. When I first came on board, I lived every day wallowing in doubt, wondering if my former career as a sailor was all just a waste. But as I gradually learned some new things and became more experienced, I finally realized what makes the crux so great. After all, not every fleet has the uncrowned Lord of the Ocean as their leader. I feel lucky just to have joined. Find me anytime if you want to know more. Hmm? So you've already finished talking to the crew, huh? <laughs> I thought it would take you a while longer. So, what did you think? <laughs> There's that modesty of yours again. I didn't think I'd ever hear the word difficult come out of your mouth. Come on, let's get on with it. First of all, life on the sea isn't always plain sailing. Injuries and illnesses happen all the time. But what is the single biggest danger facing crew members? Hmm? Is that your final answer? <laughs> all right. On to the second question. As you've just learned, the fleet plots its route using nautical charts. The charts used by the crux have additional charts attached. The supplementary chart has lots of lines in various colors for added reference. What is the purpose of these lines?
Okay, interesting, interesting. Now, last question. On longer voyages, we have to be especially careful to avoid certain weather hazards that pose a threat to the integrity of the ship and the lives of the crew. For example, water spouts. So my question is, how can we reliably predict water spouts so we can avoid them? Okay, those are all my questions. Do you want to know how you did? <laughs> I gotta say, each time I think I've wrapped my head around how great you are, you surprise me with something new. You got them all correct. They weren't the most difficult questions, but they weren't ones you could bluff your way through either. You've clearly been paying attention to my crew. Okay then, now it's time to apply that endless talent of yours to learning some new recreational activities. <laughs> Don't worry, all our recreational activities are respectable and, uh, above board. You need to realize that being out at sea might be fun for the first few days while everything's new, but before too long, looking at the same old sea every day and being so isolated from everything can really cause people to struggle mentally. That is why regular recreational activities are an absolute necessity. We offer a lot of fun courses for our newcomer training, including fishing, photography, chess. Oh, and thanks to Kazuha, these days we also offer poetry and music appreciation, as well as communal wind listening. Each newcomer has to participate in at least one, so that they've got some way of keeping themselves occupied at sea further down the line. Of course, if you'd prefer wrestling sea monsters with your bare hands, that can be arranged. <laughs> well, for today, at least, let's stick to the training schedule drawn up by Juza. If I remember correctly, it should be photography today. Come on, I'll show you. Listen up! Everyone can go back and call it a day. The photography session has been postponed. What's going on here, Juza? Oh, Captain, there you are. Well, Captain, the photography teacher just sent word saying that she's fallen ill and doesn't want to risk coming in in case she keels over in class. I see. That's quite unfortunate. Oh? Quite the multi-talented one, aren't you? In that case, why don't you help us out and lead the class today? Yeah, unfortunately, the original teacher canceled at short notice, so there's no time to schedule anything else instead. It would be great if the Traveler could step in as the teacher for the day. It's up to you, Traveler. Great, it's settled then. Juza, let's muster everyone over here to meet the new teacher. Yes, Captain. Okay, that's one, two, three. That should be everyone. Take it away, Traveler. Oh yeah? What's that? Fair enough. It seems like you already have someone in mind. So, who will it be? Me? <laughs> well, well, we could do that, or... Guyonstone Forest looks extraordinary today. It'd be a pity to not capture the scenery for posterity. So how about we snap Guyonstone Forest for today's class? Then there'd be no need for a model. <clears throat> Come on, Captain. We talked about this. The photography class is supposed to be portrait photography. Have you forgotten? Scenery looks nice at first, but it gets boring after a while. I bet it'd keep the crew more entertained if we got them learning portrait photography so they could record moments in each other's daily lives. 
Those were your exact words, Captain. <laughs> were they now? <laughs> Strange. I don't seem to remember anything about that. Well, then in that case, how about Hoixing? I bet she's perfect for the camera. Or Fuzhong. Or Mora Grubber. Even Little Yue. Seriously, Captain? Little Yue? You're just trying to wriggle your way out of this. This isn't like you. You are the captain, after all. Of all of us, you're the best suited to being a model. I agree. You were the one who invited the Traveler to be the teacher, so you should cooperate, Captain. Besides, Captain, you've never had your photo taken. It's high time you got one. You know, a heroic and striking kind of picture. We can even use it to promote the fleet during recruitment. <laughs> Real funny, guys. Well, if you say so. I'm not one to spoil the fun. <sighs> so, what do I do now, Traveler? Uh, hmm. uh like this? <laughs> You're kidding, right? I've never had my photo taken before, but something this simple shouldn't be a challenge for me. It must be the lighting. Or something. You've got it wrong. <clears throat> I never said that. You mean, go somewhere else than bring the final photo back as teaching material? Sounds good to me. <laughs> That's a good idea, isn't it, guys? Hmm, the lighting may still be a problem. But I'm open to persuasion. If you have a suitable place in mind, I can consider it. Just to be clear, I won't necessarily agree. It depends on the place you have in mind. The fishing village near Wangshu Inn? That place is deserted now, isn't it? How do you even know that place anyway? It's tiny. <laughs> I don't think I've ever seen it on a single map. I'm surprised that you'd remember such a trivial detail. He's right though, I did live there for a while. And now that you've mentioned it, it's given me the urge to go back and take a look around. Well then, let's go. We can take this opportunity to pay my old home a visit. certainly seen better days. It was never that impressive, but at least back in the day it was a lively village and home to several families. I wonder how long these last few old houses will remain standing. Nothing as dramatic as you might think. A few small incidents occurred and then people began to leave. Come on, let's take a walk around. People used to call this place Downriver because the villagers apparently moved here from a place called Upriver. With them, they brought their knowledge of fishing, which had been passed down from generation to generation. I learned a lot from them when I was here. Now Upriver is long gone, and Downriver is all but deserted. It won't be long before no one even remembers what these places are called. To Zhong. Zhong? Hmm. I barely remember this name. You're right. I was only about five or six years old when I first arrived here. I was homeless and had to wander around the streets. I remember finally managing to find half a rice bun, but 
Then a stray dog jumped out and snatched it away from me. Half a rice bun was not something I was willing to give up so easily at the time, so I chased it all the way to this neighborhood. Then a few fishermen saw us running and stopped me. They were kind enough to give me some food. Seeing me stop, the dog also stopped running. But straight away it keeled over and never got up again. Maybe it was too tired or maybe it had starved to death. I went over and saw that the dog still had the half rice bun in its mouth. It didn't let go even at the very end. <sighs> Poor thing. Had I known the dog was so weak, I would have let it take that half rice bun. I could tell they were wary of me at first. I was the dirty little kid who had just chased a dog to death over some scraps of food. But I got lucky. The village chief took pity on me and brought me to their home. That's how I ended up staying here. <laughs> Do you know what the name Beto means? <laughs> Come on, I'll explain along the way. About a year or two after I arrived, the village chief fell ill during the winter and passed away. During that same period, the harvest was getting worse, and the fisherman's catch was getting smaller day by day. Without the village chief to handle the situation, people began blaming each other. There were even rumors that some families had been overfishing and leaving nothing for the rest of the village to catch. But in the end, they all turned on me, saying that they shouldn't have ever taken me in. They said I was bad luck. They pointed to how that dog died on the first day I arrived. Next thing you know, the village chief dies, and then all the fish die out. They said I was a living curse, and the downfall of the village was all my fault. I told them that I didn't understand. I'm not a curse, I'm just Beto. Then some of the villagers started shouting, and drove me out of the village. They shouted, Nando controls life. Beto controls death. Beto controls death. Before then, all I knew about my name was that it had something to do with the stars. It wasn't until then that I realized that Beto was a constellation. And the Alcor, one of its stars, was an omen of death. Here we are. This is the old house of the village, Chief. I bet he never expected that the little girl he took in would grow up to be seen as a curse that brought about the village's total destruction. What do you mean? <laughs> Is that all? And let me guess, you got to Inazuma and the Electro Archon's Gnosis was taken as well? <laughs> well, you seem to wreak havoc on a grander scale than I ever could. <laughs> oh, I get it. You're trying to convince me that I'm not cursed. I appreciate it, and I'll take it. Let's not forget that the people whose names stick around are the ones who emerge from the stormy seas unscathed. And the ones who get swept away in the wind are the fledgling birds who couldn't hack it. I, for one, have never encountered a storm I couldn't weather. But your journey's far from over, isn't it? Just remember, there's no telling what else you might encounter in this vast world. So if you ever find some idiot trying to brand you as a scapegoat just because you're the one who lived to tell the tale, tell them Captain Beto demands to have the honor along with you. Remember... You'll always have the Captain of the Crux to back you up wherever you go. <laughs> Two cursed scapegoats banding together for survival. Sounds like a recipe for disaster, but at the same time, I kind of dig it. I'm lucky to have a friend like you. Okay, it's time to get back to our photography. Right, teacher? Come on, let's not waste any time. Get it done while you can before I change my mind. So, 
Do I need to strike a pose? All right, how about this? So, is it done yet? Please don't tell me that it looks weird. Show me! Yeah, sure, whatever. Now give it here! Hmm... Yes... I see... Alright. On behalf of the Crux, thank you very much for your photography class today. You've been an excellent teacher, and I couldn't be more satisfied. Now, as Captain of the Crux, I am exercising my official right to requisition this photograph for future promotion and recruitment purposes. <laughs> so, I'm afraid I'll be holding on to this. That's fine with you, though, right? <laughs> Here we are. This is the old house of the village chief. I bet he never expected that the little girl he took in would grow up to be seen as a curse that brought about the village's total destruction. What do you mean? <laughs> is that all? And let me guess, you got to Inazuma and the Electro Archon's Gnosis was taken as well? Well, you seem to wreak havoc on a grander scale than I ever could. <laughs> oh, I get it. You're trying to convince me that I'm not cursed. I appreciate it, and I'll take it. Let's not forget that the people whose names stick around are the ones who emerge from the stormy seas unscathed, and the ones who get swept away in the wind are the fledgling birds who couldn't hack it. I, for one, have never encountered a storm I couldn't weather. But your journey's far from over, isn't it? Just remember, there's no telling what else you might encounter in this vast world. So if you ever find some idiot trying to brand you as a scapegoat just because you're the one who lived to tell the tale, tell them Captain Beto demands to have the honor along with you. Remember, you'll always have the Captain of the Crux to back you up wherever you go. Two cursed scapegoats banding together for survival. Sounds like a recipe for disaster, but at the same time, I kind of dig it. I'm lucky to have a friend like you. Okay, it's time to get back to our photography. Right, teacher? Come on, let's not waste any time. Get it done while you can before I change my mind. So, do I need to strike a pose? What? The nerve! What do you think this is? I don't want to do this whole modeling thing. Hey, cut it out! No more pictures! <laughs> 